but speaking of mr h you did uh, you did uh, an ending explained video where you I gave did, your wrong. take on the very ending and no, then unfortunately the the director came out and he debunked your interpretation didn't he he did and so so he did but there, there's a precedent for my idea being true even though he's debunked it, right? Like, I get he's debunked Yeah. It. yeah. So for those that haven't watched it, just recap. What happened towards the end of the movie and how did you interpret it and what actually happened? Yeah, so obviously the Cenobites' gifts are not gifts, right? They're not things that you enjoy, which is why Riley, at the end of the movie, doesn't choose the Lazarus configuration, the gift of resurrection, because she knows that if her brother gets resurrected it's going to be a perversion of the it's a subversion perversion of the gift itself and so there's dialogue between Voigt and Pinhead which is like oh you never truly wanted sensation you know you actually enjoyed power and dominion over people um and so they they exchange the gift that Voigt had and he gets power right and I was like oh so it's going to be a subversion of power he's not obviously he's not why would they give him something, you know? Obviously, why? Um, so he, he he goes up, he gets impaled by Leviathan, taken into Leviathan uh, on a... It's a beautiful scene, big bright lights, uh, angelic music uh, on a gold, you know, gold table. Uh, he, he gets skinned, um, you know, his eyes turn black and then we sort of, you know, we we, we cut the scene there. And I thought to myself, ah, okay, great. Uh, he's he's going to be like a soul battery, you know, power to, he's going to be power by proxy. He's going to be powering Leviathan. And loads of people have been like, well, that's bollocks. Of course, he's he turned into a Cenobite was the explanation that the... Uh, yeah, that was my take. Uh, that's the, what that I the thought too, yeah. Gave. yeah, to me, that but, was obvious. But I think that's just lazy. I think that's, I think that there's something deeper to be had there because... The director literally says, "You yeah, know, he he likes that gift." I'm like, "Well, then that's not a perversion, is it? That's not a subversion." I dis I disagree. Not with you. I respectfully and, disagree. Uh, well, I will say there's precedent for it because loads of people are like, "Well, that makes Leviathan weak. Why does it need a soul battery?" Blah blah blah. Did you watch the end of Hellbound? Hellbound, Leviathan literally shuts down and literally deactivates, and a bolt of energy leaves Leviathan when it shuts down. Its power leaves it. And, you know, so there's a precedent for Leviathan being powered by something, right? Because it, it was shut down at the end of the second film, completely shut down. And this energy supply left it. It, it bolts out of the machine itself, you know, and it, and it flies all through the labyrinth and then it ends up back in our world again. You can see it at the end of the movie. Loads of people seem to forget this. So I thought to myself, oh, that's a great way of doing that. Great tie in. And also it goes with what they were saying, how there's, you know, um, a perversion of the gifts and things like that. But then they just made him a Cenobite. And I, I like, I, uh, cool, he's made a Cenobite, cool. But don't make him I like it. I think there then, is a little bit more. what the director said. Yeah, I, I don't know about the liking it part, because here's the thing that I saw from that. Direct, is that the director I, literally said he liked it. Yeah, I get what you're saying, like, and, and I saw that. Of a bitch. But, like, here's what I kind of got from it, is he did get the power he wanted. He did become a Cenobite. But it's like he's crucified, like you said. I don't think he can go anywhere. I think that's the I, catch. Is I don't I think, think he'll ever actually yeah. be able to leave where he is. He's like stuck where he's at. Is like but that's my in interpretation of it. Yeah. No, I yeah. Don't know. And uh, if I may, I think that uh, him becoming Cenobite is perfect. I think it fits very well with the rest of the themes of the movie. And there absolutely is the monkey's paw aspect to that wish, as it probably is to every single other. Now, hear me mm. out. If someone were to tell him, like if you went back in time to Voight and you said, okay, now he, here are these wishes that you can wish for. So you think you can get sensation? Well, in reality, it means we'll strap a machine to you that's going to torture you beyond belief. That's probably not quite what he had in mind. Maybe some people would like that. Uh, but but he wasn't one of those because he was never really about bodily sensation. And this is something that I reacted to right away when I saw all of the options. Then I was like, also thinking, why would he choose sensation? A man like him is after power. 
and everything of every single sexual conquest he has ever had will also have been about power and dominion that will have been his driving force always to me it never made sense that he would choose sensation to me that was like that doesn't fit his character the way we've been presented with it at all and then of course when pinhead says that perhaps we misjudged you your your lust and everything was never about sensation it was about power and i was like yes that there you got the character right and yeah, here that comes makes the sense monkey, and here comes the mikey monkey paw aspect of it because you think you get something but you get something else and here's like here's the twist of it because when they say power and pin had literally explains this the power that we give our definition of power is our mastery of pain and we have power in our ability to afflict this pain on others this is the very specific power that we have now obviously this is not the kind of power that he wanted he wanted power in business he wanted power in this life he wanted more money he wanted more relations that's the kind of power that he was imagining in he did mm -hmm. not get this Instead, he got the power of a Cenobite, which in reality is to be enslaved by a Leviathan. Yeah, in he terms further of servitude, empowers yeah. Leviathan. So there's the monkey paw with that to uh, that wish. Yeah, you get power to dispense torture over others, but at the same time, you are still a slave. That's the monkey's paw with that particular wish. Mm. So what happened? Why did he not appreciate it? Well, because he obviously changes when he becomes a Cenobite. Like that's the what the person that you see becoming a Cenobite. That's no longer him. Something has been done to him already. It was right there in his notes. The Cenobites, they're punctured and they're mutilated beyond the ability of the human body to survive it. And we see that right away when he's there uh, in that uh, on that bed being transformed toward the very end of the movie. He's already pale as a corpse. He has no hair. Something has mm. been done to him already. His, the body he has there has already undergone some kind of process which means that it's no longer his normal human body. Maybe it also affected his mind. What happens now is that his previous human body, which is a body that the Cenobites inflicted their power upon, couldn't deal with that pain. But now in this new body, pain is no longer something to fear. Pain now is pleasure. So when he is tortured and he's made into a Cenobite, this new version of Voigt, Voigt of five minutes ago, if he knew what was going to come, he would run away and tethered. But it's too late mm. now. Now he's already down that rabbit hole. Now he appreciates it because he's no longer who he was. He is now the perfect slave of Leviathan, and he enjoys this gift. Although Voigt, the Voigt who sought it out, would have been horrified and probably would have wanted to get the box back again compared to what he got. So to me, it's the perfect monkey paw. He lost, not he not he he got the power of the uh, of, to be a Cenobite, but in the process, he lost all his earthly power. He lost his mm. humanity and he lost his soul. Case in point, the Cenobites that you referenced yourself from Hellbound. They'd all forgotten that they once were humans. Give this guy a century and he'll have forgotten everything that he once was, another slave for a, for a Leviathan, but he has the excuse to justify everything he does because he has the power to dispense pain over others. To me, mm. it was perfect, absolutely wonderful, exactly how it's supposed to be, and I'm sorry, uh, Mr. H, you're welcome to keep your head calm, uh, canon, but on this one, in my book, the director was right. Uh, it's tomato tomato i still like the ending i just prefer a little bit more of a nuanced approach but i could i fully accepted a group of your points like i can see how i can see that that's the conclusion and why you think that that's good like i still think that that is good as well yeah that's kind of what i kind of got from it. not that exact point but like yeah basically he got to be a cenobite but he's not going to get the exact power that he wanted mm -hmm. right yeah. like he's still a that slave that was kind of what i was seeing yeah yeah